What's going on everybody? Culture Dog Sam Hatch back here with another Blu-ray Spotlight review. Not too long ago, Twilight Time had a little bit of a sale and I managed to jump in before it ended and picked up a film that I haven't actually owned on any home video format. Thankfully, I grabbed their issue of John Carpenter's Vampires. See, I was able to get the sucker for 20 bucks from Twilight Time's website and got it super fast, so that was cool. Really dug, dug the service. And uh, I always dug the packaging they have. It's a Viva Elite case, but it's not the traditional blue one. It's got the clear, clear action. It's got a nice booklet in there, too, with the poster on the back, but some pretty cool stylized graphics. But Vampires is another one of those John Carpenter films, like following hot on the heels of Village of the Damned, was met with a large exclamation of meh from both, you know, horror fans, vampire fans, and John Carpenter fans. Um, it's a tale of James Woods as a, you know, Vatican commando. He's working for the Catholic Church to hunt down and kill vampires because they're abominations. And as much as this film isn't really celebrated, it still does have a lot of influence on other films. It's based on a John Stakely novel, who, which I never uh, never actually got a chance to read. I've read some of his other stuff. But if you've ever seen you know, Vampire Hunter D. Bloodlust, you know, the kind of vampire hunters in that movie really feel like they were just ripped right out of this movie. So there's this kind of gang of badasses that James Woods leads, including Daniel Baldwin, and they go around and they find these nests of vampires, and very much like you know the the Winchester brothers in Supernatural, they kind of root out these foul creatures of the night and uh, destroy them. And they do get to shoot a lot of this film during the day. It does have a very very stylized look to it. Gary Kibbe, the DP, um, did a lot of you know kind of late magic hour shooting, and then a lot of filters were used on this to put a gradation on the skyline, so it's very saturated and reddish at the top and filters down it looks kind of orange and dusty towards the bottom so it's very filtered aggressive stylized film and it's a western essentially john carpenter is upfront and and honest about the fact that he wanted to make a western more than he wanted to make a vampire movie and so many of his movies are these genre pictures that are really westerns at heart you know assault on precinct 13 being kind of a, a loose redo of rio bravo and you know, even the thing could be a, a monster western in in icy territory instead of the desert. So he just kind of wore that on his uh, wore his heart on his sleeve and really just went for it and made this thing as much of a western as he could get away with while also having it be a vampire tale. Cheryl Lee is in it as a woman who is going to eventually turn into a vampire, and Thomas Ian Griffith is in it as the vampire leader, and he totally looks like Michael Wincott. I mean, there was a period when I saw this film. And I thought he was Michael Wincott for almost all of the movie. So kudos to him for fooling me on that front. Um, but yeah, quickly, a lot of these guys on James Woods' team are, are destroyed and massacred. And it just becomes a, a few people against the vampire hordes. Simple kind of showdown territory stuff. Uh, a lot of the, the action of the film is not, not tiresome, really, but it, it's very... <laughs> Uh, structured in a weird way because they just don't go and do cool like blade-like action moves on one another. There's a little bit of hand-to-hand -hand combat, but it's a very organized technique that they use where they lasso the vampires and use a winch on their vehicles to drag it out into sunlight. So <laughs> there's a lot of those kind of shots where you have, yep, here's another vampire being slowly dragged out of a building. <laughs> Not the most visually energetic material. The characters are fun. James Woods is essentially, again, like much much of John Carpenter's characters, you know, his stand-in. He's the doppelganger. He's John Carpenter's fantasy wish fulfillment, like the action hero, marquee idol that he wanted to be. But uh, it's cool having a, a bit of an older actor do that now. So James Woods gets to do a lot of ad-libbing. If you know anything about him as a character and his kind of ideas and the things that come out of his mouth, He's the perfect guy to do a lot of crazy ad-libbing and comes up with some crazy stuff when he's talking bad and talking trash about the vampires, including, uh, he coins the phrase, I don't know if he coined it or stole it from somewhere else, but uh, Strata Chocolata was <laughs> a uh, like bone mo of his in here. So, yeah, bravo, kudos to James Woods for coming up with Strata Chocolata. But yeah, it's a, it's a politically incorrect, brash vampire tale. Supporting cast is fun, and there's a, a twist or two that occurs that nobody's going to be surprised by. 
But, you know, it's decent. It's a decent enough take. I haven't seen any of the sequels. I know they did a John Bon Jovi one, etc. But, yeah, I'm super cool fine with having this in my collection. Again, it's of that ilk, Ghost to Mars, this, filled to the damned. Doesn't knock anybody's socks off, but I'll throw it on any day of the week. Fine. Visually, this thing looks pretty nice. It's got a lot of real vibrant contrast to it and uh, punchy blacks, etc. Um, it almost looked like there was some aggressive edge enhancement at times, but said, yeah, really, really sharp picture. Again, as I mentioned before, it was very stylized and filtered, so not always the most natural looking picture, but yeah, very vibrant, looked great on HD and uh, looked good on my projector and the, you know, the kind of earth tones of it and everything were done well, whereas this would have a lot of chroma noise on something like Laserdisc. So it's cool having it in Blu-ray with really solid colors. Again, there's a lot of stuff shot outside in the daylight because it's time to burn the vampires. But of course, when they have to go into the nest, there's a lot of really, really dark material. And there's an early scene in particular where it's like pitch black inside. But, you know, Kira Kibbe is so great at painting with light. So that, you know, the, the blacks aren't really crushed. There's some decent shadow detail, but it's really the light and where it pops up that allows you to see what's going on. And it's never one of those cases where you're like, oh, this is too dark or too dim. Or, you know, if you saw this on VHS, you might be like, eh, what's going on? But it's really cool seeing it in high def because you can really get a feel for the art of the cinematography about how shafts of light or little pieces peeping through in between the boards really is what allows you to see what's going on in the frame. So... I thought it was pretty cool looking. It's got a 5.1 DTS HD master audio and a 2.0 track as well in English. It's mostly driven by the music. John Carpenter's score with uh, Dave Davies helping him out. And his score is really what's driving and thumping across your soundtrack. I mean, there's obviously some vampire noises surrounding you, etc. But uh, yeah, I think the, the music is really the star of this sucker. There are a couple of, uh, for collector's edition, there's not a ton of killer extras, but there are a few things. And I think they've been reissued from a previous uh, video release. There's a trailer and a making of John Carpenter's Vampire's piece and a isolated score track, which is super cool. More uh, releases should do isolated score tracks. I love that. And this film, it's got a really cool uh, dynamic score. It's usually very driving and you know drum and guitar heavy, but there's a lot of good dynamics to it. And the commentary track with John is really fun. And, you know, he has a good time telling you about the story and very no frills. Uh, I like his, you know, attitude about filmmaking and, and, you know, he lets you know the straight poop, you know, pretty much. Uh, so it was cool. And you, you get a good feel for, like, what what, it, what the shoot was like and what some of the challenges were in, in making it and, uh, and especially, like, trying to cram a lot of stuff in at once towards the end there yeah fun commentary not as awesome as the stuff he would do when he would do commentary tracks with kurt russell on the films they had made together um but yeah he's engaging enough and and sometimes he'll talk with the dp this time it's just john carpenter so he does a good job at, at keeping it lively enough when it's just him you know talking to a microphone for a couple hours but yeah it was definitely worth picking up this uh, twilight time limited edition series blu-ray so I'm um, one step closer to completing my John Carpenter video collection. I think I have to get a couple things, smaller, old, vintage things to, to complete it. But yeah, super happy to have that. Thanks for hanging out, as always. I'll uh, enjoy talking to you guys about John Carpenter movies below momentarily. And uh, hopefully you're having a great week. I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.